shine like light, God. Help us to shine like new money, Lord, God. Boy, Help us to just slow. shine, shine, shine wherever we go that somebody will see us and we get their attention, God, whether we speak or not. Mm -hmm. Let them see the goodness of you. Oh, yes, Lord, Lord Jesus. Lord. And once again, look over our little children and cause them to enjoy summer when school is out. Mm -hmm. Call the parents to keep guide on the children and make sure they know where they are at all times. Mm -hmm. And oh God, we just thank you now. We thank you. For being a savior, the savior of the world. Yes. And have mercy upon each and every one of us. And special send out God for all our elders up here, Elder Peck. And uh mm -hmm. Elder Diana Bowden, and all of our elders, but not just the elders, but any of our sick people that can't come into the house right now, God, for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. But God, touch them and let them have church in their homes, God. Touch Lord. It's just you and them. Let them enjoy the service today, God. However way in which you give it to them. And we thank you this morning in the name of Jesus. Jesus. And everybody will be able to say amen. Amen. And amen. amen. One more thing, oh God. Look over our sisters that have been here. Touch your Lisa Rogers, God. Touch it for her thing that she may be going through right now, God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just touch, touch her body, body God. Touch her family, God. I pray that you touch Pat, Pat Brown, God. And Dion, touch the bodies, oh God, with blessing, helps and healings as well. And oh God, to just help them and look and bless you for Brother Ben surgery going yeah. well. And everything went well there as well. And anyone else that has had surgery, do it this week, God. I have surgery coming up. Make sure the doctors are ready, God. Oh, yes. Make sure the operating room is ready, God. Yes, Make yes, sure that yes. all the people that work around the doctors are in order, God. Yes. That everything will go decently and in order. Because yes. we know that you are a God of war. Yes. So we thank you this morning. Yes, thank and you all the people Lord. will be able to say Amen. Amen. And some of the people will be able to say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
you, Lord. Ooh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, yeah. Jesus. He's a mighty God. Man, he showed himself this week, didn't he? All right. Oh, hallelujah. Ooh, he showed his hand this week. All right. Uh, tell somebody, I'm still standing. I'm still hallelujah. standing. Hallelujah. I guess we'll wait one more week to go to the Oh, hallelujah. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I love him. I love him because he
Hallelujah. He is our everything. Yes. Everything. 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 I wanted to say that in case somebody didn't know that. Amen. Mm. He's already proved that. Oh, yes, yes he, he has. has. We can look around and see who's here. Amen. We're here because he allows us to be here. Amen. Yes, he allows us to be he alive allows as well. To to get a good night's sleep. Come on yes. now. Yes. Yes. Who else would be like that? He did provide for you. Let right. you use eyes to see. Yeah. Let you be able to have a nostril, a nose, a smell. Okay. All of you be up. Oh, God. God is good. Ear so you can hear. Hear. Friends. Neighbors. But don't forget enemies. You got those two. Love them too. But that's the time you pray. Yeah, that's right. You pray for them because. Somebody prayed for us. We may have been 20 and 30 years ago, we may have been enemies of somebody or some person that was wrong for people. Right. But the thing about it, he's out of fortress. Yes, he is. He already knows. I already know. What we're going to be doing 20 years from now or 30 years from now. He already knows what we're going to do when we leave here this afternoon. He already know. But since we here in the house that he allows us to be in, let's give him the best that we can give him. That's right. Because when we leave here, actually leaving here is not promised. It's not. But if he let us leave here, where will we then go? He's going to look out for us. As I said this morning, that where will we go? Somebody's always looking. And somebody can determine whether we are Christians, hypocrites, mm. thieves, murderers, mm. whatever. But we don't have to be concerned about what they say or what they think because it's about what we already know. And if you know what's in your heart, you belong to Him. So what they say don't mean a part of a hell of a beans or nothing else. <laughs> Stand on his word and trust in him. Uh -huh. He's the provider. He's the maker. Yeah. He's the creator of us all. He made us to look just the way he wants us to look so we don't get confused picking elbow or Brandon Lee or anybody else that we don't all have to look the same because we might go and pick elbow from the head. In fact, the hair might not be elbow, so what I'm saying is good that we look different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He needs us to look different. Yes, sir. Matter of fact, he don't need us all to know the same, the same thing. Because of the fact about that, we have us of each other. Yes, we are. What you know, you have me. What I know, I have you. Amen. And if we can't have nobody, then we've wasted all these years doing nothing. Some of us have been here a long time. I'm here for the long haul. The way they get rid of me, I die out, or either they pick me out. <laughs> this is my home. Amen. Right. Yeah. Amen. You know, the Lord's good because when he got ready to evict Adam and Eve out of the garden, he gave us some clothes. He made them some clothes. Yes, he did. He didn't just turn on us and say, get out and go. So he still loved them. Yeah. Just like he still loved us. Yeah. No matter what we say. Yeah. Or no matter what we do. All right. He still loves us. Still love us. Do I have anybody this morning with a, Hallelujah. a quick one minute testimony or anything? <laughs> anybody? No one? Yeah, Tracy. I felt somebody had one. I did. Thank you. Just so thankful and grateful to God for healing my mom. She had a rough time the past couple of weeks. And I thank you all for the prayers. Continue prayers going forth as she recovers. She's starting to just look like herself. Um, she's had two procedures, pretty serious procedure in less than 30 days. And she went to the ER in between. So she's she's had a rough time, but God has kept her continuing to keep her. And I told her, I said, Mom, you don't even know the prayers that are going forth. Yeah. So you don't even know 
know some of these people. That's all people right. People are constantly asking my neighbors, how's your mom? So I'm just so thankful yeah. and grateful Ooh. for um, you all yeah. and for God keeping my mom. Amen. Amen.
Yeshua when she's there. But it's all over. I don't care wherever you go. You'll never find nobody. Nobody greater than our Lord and our Savior. Hallelujah. The keeper. The keeper of all his children. All of his children might not be good, but he still loves us. Yes, he does. Yes, yes, yes. He still cares. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be a member and a son of God. I won't say a Christian because you got all kind of moments, you got all kind of religion. So just let me be a son of God. Mm -hmm. All right. And I'm glad to be one. Mm -hmm. And I hope you are too. Oh, yes. Oh, because yes. one day, I can't pinpoint it, but one day he's going to return. Mm -hmm. And he's going to. Grab all that is. Mm -hmm. All that belongs to him. Oh. Yes. And that's why we, if we love our own families and friends, let us try to get them to get a relationship. Because we can't keep gambling that he's not coming back the next year or year after. We don't know. That's right. We would like to live with them. Yes, Lord. But if not, don't worry, they going to a place. They'll have a place to go. But they just won't be where we are. Mm -hmm. You know, it's good that we've been in that book of Proverbs. And it's, it's really good because it says a whole lot about life then. Uh -huh. But it's speaking of life now. That's right. right. Different times and situations then. But the same thing today as the world did. Mm -hmm. Men agree, cheaters, thieves, liars, harlots, prostitutes, whores, gamblers, thieves, murderers. We got all of that. And the man that put this in the book of Proverbs was a great man. And still looked on as being great. But it lets us know any of us can get tricked. He blesses us. Yes, he does. And that's remembered by him blessing us. And not necessarily for us ourselves. Let's try to take a portion of whatever we get and help somebody. Yes. Because it's all about helping. It's all about loving. It's all about caring. Yes. So if you reading, you, you who are watching us this morning, if you're reading the book of Proverbs, we're in this morning going to be discussing chapter 3. In your spare time, pick it up and just go through the book of Proverbs and see then, but see now as it was then. So as Pastor Tony will be bringing him Word this morning from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3. So she come, prepare yourself to hear well, and talk to yourself and ask your heart to receive all that you can get. Because it's a serious matter and a serious issue. Amen. Pastor Tony Allen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, thank you. Hallelujah, Father. I thank you for another opportunity, Father. Thank you, Lord. To just come before your people, Lord, to share your heart. Father, I pray, Father, as we continue down this journey of wisdom in the book of Proverbs, that you would teach us. Yes. Teach us to number our days, oh God. Yes. Teach us, Father God, to be productive, to be fruitful in you, oh God. Mm -hmm. So that we can apply our hearts, Lord, to your wisdom, oh God. Father, as we open up our hearts to you, oh God, we open up our hearts to receive from you this morning, Father. Yes. Father, I thank you, Father, that your word is powerful, Father, and that your word, Father God, is going to go forth this morning, and that it's going to do everything that you intend for it, for it to do. It's going to cause us to hunger and to thirst after you, Lord. 
is going to cause us to transform, Father God, into the image of your son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Father God, I thank you, Father God, as this, as, at this moment, oh God, I pray and I ask God that you rise and stand tall within me, Lord, mm -hmm. so that your people will hear and see you mm -hmm. and none of Tony. I thank you, Father, that you have already added a blessing unto your word thank and that we shall be increased yes. and deepened in the knowledge and understanding of who you are. In Jesus' name, Jesus. I pray and I thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 What are you beautiful people in the Lord that you may be seated. Glory to God. All right, all right. So, 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 I'm, I'm going to try not to be up here all, all week. But I am enjoying the book of Proverbs. How many, how many of us enjoy the book of Proverbs? <laughs> how many of us are learning from the book of Proverbs? How many of us have allowed the Holy Spirit to point out those areas in our lives that we may have been walking in foolishness? How many of us see a difference, have seen a difference in the last two weeks since we've been really prayerfully meditating and studying the book of uh, Proverbs? Because that's what the, that, that, and not only the book of Proverbs, but that's what the word is all about. You know, allowing the word to, when we open up the word of God, it's like a mirror, as in the book of James. Uh -huh. And the word of God, we open up, and we're supposed to see those areas in our lives that God wants to put his finger on to transform us, to change us. Because it's no, it's no good at work, it's no good at looking at the word and then we close it and we, as James said, and we go back and unchanged and not transform. Mm -hmm. It's just like you're looking in the mirror and you see you need to comb your hair or brush your teeth. And you don't do that, you just, okay, my hair is messed up, my teeth need to be brushed, and I just, oh, well, whatever. <laughs> you got to act upon it. So we're gonna continue down this journey in the book of Proverbs. And as I said, already, I'm gonna slow down. Slow down, Tony, because I'm excited. All right. Okay. All right. As we've already been defined, the book of Proverbs is a book of godly instructions and guidance uh -huh. for us to live our daily lives in alignment with Jesus. Amen. The book of Proverbs, and I don't want us to miss this, it encourages us to surrender every aspect of our lives, spiritual, vocational, financial, physical, mentally, emotionally, under the wisdom of God. Amen. And in order to walk in godly wisdom, because there's three types of wisdom, and I'm going I'm to briefly talk about that in a minute, to walk in godly wisdom, we have to be connected to Jesus Christ. That's right. You cannot have godly wisdom if you are not aligned and connected to Christ. That's right. And that means that we have to have a daily pursuit, right. daily going after wisdom. Yes. And we see that in the word. It's not just something that you get um, a one-time thing and you got it and, and, you, and you automatically have it. We have to continually pursue wisdom daily. Right. That means continually, every day, cultivating and deepening our relationship with Jesus Christ. That's right. If you're not in your word, if I'm not in my word, if we're not in our word, if we're not praying daily, we're not going to walk in godly wisdom. Amen. Bottom line. Because the only way that you can have godly wisdom is to be connected to Jesus. Right. And if we are not connected to him, what happens, our discernment is off. And then we begin to operate in foolishness or worldly wisdom. And that's very important, and that happens, and that happens among us believers uh -huh. many times. And I know I'm talking to Tony now. Okay. We are walking, and we think we hear from the Lord. We think we're walking in godly wisdom, but we're walking in our own views, in our own wisdom. So we have to be very, or even sometimes demonic wisdom. 
when we begin to align ourselves with the world uh, with the world views. So we as believers have to be very careful. That's why it's important that we spend time in His presence because a lot of us we. We may miss a day or two, a week or whatever, not praying or not in the word of God. And you know, you can get by. When we see a lot of people get by, not connected to God, but you're only going to go so far. And then we start operating, we go through struggles. We begin, our life becomes so much difficult. And it's not that when you walk in the wisdom, you're not going to have struggles or you're not going to have hardships, but you have the peace of God to take you through. So before we get into our, our lesson today, I want to define three words because we're going we're gonna to talk about them in the book of uh, Proverbs 3, and we have been hearing them often, and we're going to continue to hear these three, and we, we say them all the time, and sometimes we probably use them interchangeably, really which they're not the same, and I know most of us know what they mean, but I just want to reiterate the definition I want to define, and I want to define first, knowledge. Knowledge is basically facts, information, and skills acquired by a person through experience or education. That's knowledge. Understanding. Understanding is the ability to grasp or to comprehend the facts or information that you have acquired through the uh, experience, observation, or education. Mm-hmm. Then we have discretion. Discretion is the uh, is the capacity to closely assess something and to apply sound judgment. Then we have wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to apply divine word or, or, or divine principles. So a lot of us may have knowledge. We know the word of God. We can quote, I know folks that we can quote it from Genesis to Revelation. But when it comes time, when it comes down to applying it, that's where we lack wisdom. We can quote you the scriptures. We know the scriptures. But can we walk those scriptures out in our lives? Wisdom is having the ability to apply the purpose and the wisdom of God. I'm sorry, the purpose and will of God in your life. We are, I know the will. I know what God wants me to do. But are you doing it? Okay. Are you doing it? Uh-huh. Have you applied it? Okay. The devil knows. So we're we're doing no good by just knowing. We have to apply it. We have to surrender. We have to yield. And we're talking about divine wisdom. I said there's three types of wisdom that I'm going to touch on before we get into the word today. Because listen, we're just setting the the apostles said the foundation. We're setting the groundwork here. Uh And so as we go through Proverbs 3, I want you to keep in mind when we hear those three words, apply those definitions. Three types of wisdom. We have human wisdom, and that's the wisdom that we acquire through books, education, uh, observation, experience. This is the wisdom that most of us have, that everyone has. You don't have to be saved to have human wisdom. Some people call it common sense. Mm-hmm. Okay, that, you don't have to be saved. We, all, we know a lot of people that have human wisdom that's operating in their own intelligence. And and they probably get far, you know, doctors, you know, lawyers, uh, teachers, you know, a lot of folks that have human wisdom, smart folks, we call them smart, intelligent people. And they get kind of far in life, but it's only going to take them so far. Because if you don't have the wisdom of Christ, your your destination of where you're going in life is 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 only going to take you so far. Because The word tells us in 1 Corinthians that Jesus is the wisdom of God. We're not going to go there, but you can uh, definitely go there in your your prayer time and really ask the Holy Spirit to unpack that for you. And that's 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 
I want to say chapter 2 and chapter 1, but it's somewhere around 1 Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians, Jesus Christ is the wisdom of God. He's the wisdom and the power of God. So if you don't have him, you don't have wisdom nor, nor power. And the only way you're going to have him is to be connected to him. The second type of wisdom is, and, and, and human wisdom is mostly uh, defined or mentioned in Ecclesiastic, around Ecclesiastic, Ecclesiastic 3, Solomon's talking about human wisdom. So you're in your, in your prayer for time, you can definitely look that up as well. Demonic wisdom. Demonic wisdom is the wisdom of the, usually, usually is identified in the wisdom of the rulers of this world. Mm -hmm. in, high, in principalities, in our government. We have demonic influence that's working through many of our governmental leaders that's causing them to implement laws, rules, sanctions that go against the word of God. And many believers, unfortunately, line themselves up with those laws, those rules that go against God. Just because the government makes something a law does not mean that it's right. Amen. If you go against the word of God, it's demonic. Yes. And we as believers have no business agreeing with it and lining ourselves up with it because we're opening up portals in our lives when we begin to accept, agree, and walk with the demonic wisdom or the government or the men, women, in those uh, places that's putting those laws in place. What we need to do is begin to pray against them in the name of Jesus. And then, of course, we have godly wisdom. And godly wisdom is spiritually discerned. It is pure and it is peaceful. It's the godly wisdom that's going to help us live a holy, surrendered life that's pleasing unto the Lord. And in order to do that, we have to be saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. Because we cannot live a life that's pleasing unto God if we're not saved and filled with his Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's godly wisdom. It's pure and it's peaceful. Doesn't mean that we're not going to go through struggles in life. I want to say this many times for so many people for some reason think when you come to Jesus Christ, you're not going to have problems. When he told us we are. We're going to have hardships. We're going to have affliction. We're going to have problems. The road, the road may be crooked, but when we are aligned with Jesus Christ, he knows to take us down that straight path. In spite of all the curves, the twists, and the turns in this thing called life. Right. Now, now we're ready to go to Proverbs 3. Okay. Y'all like this Proverbs. Okay. Proverbs 3. The three or four underlining things that I want us to take away from Proverbs 3 as we read through it today, and I don't know if we have Bible study on Wednesday, but if we don't get, finished, get, get through it all today, is number one, Proverbs 3. The theme of Proverbs 3 is to teach us how to trust in the Lord. It teaches us how to be totally dependent upon God, how to live under, uh, how to surrender our life and walk according to his purpose and his will. And doing that, it tells us and it teaches us how to do that and how not to despise his correction or his discipline. So those are basically the three things that we want to take away it, it, from Proverbs 3. Trust, total dependency on God. Total dependency. Surrendering, learning how to surrender and applying and learning how to surrender and apply the knowledge of him properly and despise not his correction. Are we ready for Proverbs 3 1? My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall thy add to thee. Right there. That's a mouthful right there. The benefits. The benefits. If I had to title this message, it probably would be the benefits of, pers of pursuing godly wisdom. 
My son, forget, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments. As we, also, as, as we know, as we said before, that the book of Proverbs, the first um, couple chapters, I, was, I don't know, it was the first 11, 12, 18 chapters, I can't remember, are written by Solomon, and he's talking to his son, and he's giving his son godly instructions to, to, to live a fruitful and productive life, and the only way you're going to live that life is through, is keeping the word of Christ, keeping his word. And when I read that, my son, it just took me back to uh, Jesus and, and the Father. In the Proverbs 15, it says, a son, a wise son make his father glad. And I thought about Jesus when he was being baptized. And the Father said, this is my son whom I am well pleased. And it, that right there showed me that, number one, Jesus is the source of all wisdom. And he is our example of how to live a life that is pleasing yes. unto the Lord. Amen. So when I look at Proverbs 3, 1 and 2, for the length of days and, and long life and peace shall thy add to thee. That means to, what that means is that, number one, when we follow the ways of the Lord, we're going to have extended life. That, that means quality, I'm sorry. Quality of years. Quality of years. That means over here, this life, and of course, we got the eternal life. So we, we, when I look at that, that, that's a benefit of keeping his word, walking in his ways. Quality of years and quality and quality of life. Quality of years and quality of life. That means we live the abundant life, the life that Jesus Christ promised. Does, once again, it does not mean it's going to be void of problems, but it means that we can go through them in peace, knowing that we are connected to the one and only source of wisdom and power, which is Jesus Christ. Qualities, I want you to remember that. Quality of years and qu qu quantity of years and quality of life. Proverbs 1 and 2. Uh -huh. Let's, I'm going to group Proverbs 3 and 4 together. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thy heart. Verse 4. So shall thy find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Let not mercy, and I want you to underline those two words, mercy and truth. Uh -huh. in, the, in the Hebrew, uh, the Old Testament is written mostly in Hebrew and Aramaic. Aramaic. This portion, this, these portion of scripture is mostly Hebrew. In Hebrew, the word mercy means, and I'm going to try to pronounce it, I'm stumbling over it. <laughs> and I'm going to stumble for you. He sighed. And I'm going to spell it for you in a minute. But that means love. That means a loyalty. That means a covenant love. Um, he sighed is spelled C. The C, the C is obviously silent. C S E A D. I'm sorry, let me start, let me start again. C-H-E-S-E-D. C-H-E-S-E-D. And that describes a loyal, faithful, deep covenant type of love. And that's the love that we have with Jesus Christ. That's the love that God made with his children in the Old Testament. And that's the love got, that God made, made. That's the type of love that God has or covenant agreement that he's made with us through the New Testament when we come to Jesus, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Mercy. So that's what that equates to in Hebrew. Love, loyalty, and faithfulness. That faithful, deep kind of love. So when the Jewish culture, when they heard mercy, that he had mercy, they knew exactly what that meant. They knew exactly that that meant. But you remember, Hebrews get, get the mindset of, of, uh, of the Israelites. 
that meant love. When it's when they heard that they knew that meant God's love, God faithfulness, God loyalty to him. Okay, and mercy and truth. In truth, truth, the Old Testament in Hebrew, that truth, the word truth, equates to faithfulness. It, it equates to faithfulness. It equates to dependency, commitment. So when the Hebrews heard truth, what comes to their mind is faithfulness, commitment, and truth. So that it's interchangeable for them when they heard that word. And these are, when we look at this portion of scripture, three and four, God is telling us, let love and faithfulness, don't forsake it. These are virtues as a believer that we need to walk in. That we need to allow to come, uh, that need to be reflected in our lives. Bind them about thy neck. Write, the, write them upon the table of thy heart. That's symbolic for when we uh, bind them about thy neck. When you talk about something around your neck, like this necklace I got on here is close. It's close. So he said, bind them about, by, 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 bind them, oh, come on, slow down. Bind them around your neck. That means that these virtues, Faithfulness, loyalty, commitment, those need to be close to our hearts. Those are motives that need to come out of our hearts that will govern the way that we live. God, so in other words, he's saying that symbolize, when you look at the um, Old Testament, usually when you see love and faithful, faithfulness paired together, it symbolizes a loyal commitment. You are a person or a woman or a man of your word. This, this is more integrity. So this portion of scripture is teaching us how to walk and to have moral, moral, moral integrity about our lives. And then this, we will find favor with God and with man. God not only want us to have loyalty, love, and faithfulness towards him, but he want us to have it towards humanity. He want us to be, when we make somebody, when we give somebody a word, he want us to be committed. He want us to be committed to people. When we promise we're going to do something, don't just not do it. Or if, you, or if something happens, we know that things happen, let them know. Hey, something came up and I can't. Uh -huh. I can't do that. Amen. But just not show up or just not do it. That's not commitment. That's not mercy. That's not truth. Um, love and faithfulness is what atones sin. Once again, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is a perfect example of these virtues that we need to allow the Holy Spirit because we cannot do it by ourselves the Holy Spirit within us to bring them out. So when we look at Proverbs chapter 3, those are, are verses 3 and 4. Virtue, those are characteristics, characteristics of wisdom that we get through the Holy Spirit when we surrender to the Holy Spirit and it's letting us know that we need to be loyal and commitment to God and to people. That is when we will find favor with the Lord. Bind them about our neck. That needs to be close within our hearts. These are virtues that we need to work on displaying. Uh, First Peter chapter one also lists about, I wanna say about eight other virtues that he tells us to add to our faith, which is different than what Galatians five tells us. So. This book of wisdom, believers, like I said in the beginning, we cannot walk in godly wisdom unless we're connected to the Holy Spirit. And it's a daily pursuit, a daily pursuit. Because I know, and I'm talking about me, this week, it was a time this week that, that, that godly wisdom, that, that, that the human wisdom kicked in. Okay? It kicked in on the job real bad. I didn't get ugly 
said nothing. I mean, I, I didn't think I did, but the Lord let me know when I got home that I did. <laughs> but, I, but, but, you know, but, the, but it wasn't nothing bad. And human wisdom is not always bad. You know, it may look good to us, but it's not God. Right. And, what, and what had happened was, I was looking at, I have open positions, and what, and what I was looking at, people who had been with me for a long time. And so I was going to move these people into these positions. And we had a meeting, and it got kind of ugly. A young lady got kind of real ugly. She said some things, and I got kind of like upset with her. I didn't say nothing, but I said, okay. So I went home, I was really mad at her. I said, okay, what's wrong with I'm gonna move her out of my section. I'm gonna have her transfer, da, 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 da. <laughs> and I told her everything I was gonna do. And so the Holy Spirit said, he said, after I got done telling God what I was gonna do, he said, what she said was correct. Everything she said was true. You didn't like the way it was delivered. Right. But what she said was true. And he said, you're looking at people because they've been with you for a long time. And those are not the people that I want to move with you. He said, when you're moving and I'm taking you to another level, although they've been with you, I have not given them the skill set right. that they're going to need to okay. complement where I'm taking you. Okay. Jesus. I said, okay, Jesus. I know that's right. Now, I've been with them, and they've been with me for a very, very long time. So I said, okay, Lord. So, so he started ministering to me over the weekend as to how he wanted me to make changes in, my, in the area that I'm responsible for. And the person who was the most boast, boasterous and, her, and, her, and she did not hold back. But God said, everything she said was right. You didn't receive that from her because of the deliverance, which he was right. So I did go back. She came to my office the next day. She apologized that the Holy Spirit started leading me and making changes. But I would have never saw with my human eyes because I'm looking at these people that have been with me for X amount of time, but God said, God, to give them what they're going to need to take you to where I'm taking you. This is, what, this is who you're going to need. Uh -huh. And who I'm going to need, or who he told me I'm going to need, I would have never thought about that individual because that was the one that went off. <laughs> but, but the Holy Spirit removed the scale off of my eyes and he allowed me to see her skills and her and, and the things that we're going to need with all these changes that she possessed and the ones that been with me forever he allowed me to see their deficiencies and they are not going to be where I'm taking you and you ain't going and you're not going to you, you got to detach yourself from them They've been with you for 20 years, but it's time to let them go. Wow. So I was listening. I was looking at the wrong thing and the wrong people. So, wisdom. So like I said all the time, human wisdom is not bad. That's right. It's not bad. It's just that it's not what God wants. Yeah. It's not what he wants. So I learned, I learned something this week. Jesus, I'm sorry, I've been excited ever since he showed me that. So anyway, so that's verses 3 and 4. Those, those, those are attributes or or, or, or virtues that God want us to keep close to us, and He want us to allow that to be a reflection of who we are. That should that should govern our nature, and it's not something that we should that we should have to force ourselves to do because we have the Holy Spirit living within us. And so, as we continue to deepen our relationship and alignment with Him, and then those virtues or those characteristics will begin to automatically come out of our lives. Amen. All right, now we're on verse 5 and 6. And we all, we all know this verse. Because we probably quote it every morning. Mm. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not unto thy own understanding like I was doing. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy path. Just in that little situation I gave you. It wasn't a bad situation. Did I acknowledge God? No, I did not acknowledge God because this is something I've been doing for you ever. So, you know, I, you know, I'm gonna have open positions. I'm gonna put the people in who I want to put in these positions. So, you know, they've been with me for a long time. So, hey, it's no problem. So, did I consult God? No. But God used people. He would use people to bring you back around, and that's what He did. That's what He did because my prayer is. 
And I do pray, pray this prayer, and but do I do it? No. But because I did not do it, God had to do it for me. And that's one thing about our Lord. That's why I love him so much because when we pray, he knows our heart. And he knows that we don't want to go down the wrong road. And I asked him, I said, Lord, I'm, I'm asking you to direct my path. If there's something that I don't, that's not of you and not your will, not your will, don't let it happen. Circumvent it, stop it. And he, we can't choose the way he's going to stop it because that girl, y'all, she got ugly in that meeting. <laughs> but, but he stopped it. He stopped me from making the wrong decision. And so, and like I said, the, the paths of life, they got a lot of twists and turns. But when we're connected and we're serious about him and our, our walk with him, he's going to get us on that straight path. Yes, we is. may detour, we may go around the circle yeah. this way, but God knows how to get us back on the straight path. So today, as I say, I'm just so excited that he got me back on the straight path because he don't want any of us to fail. He don't want us to fail. That's God right. wants you to succeed more than you yes. want to succeed. Yes. And he knows that we're going to make bad decisions. He knows we're going to operate in our flesh from times. Yes. He knows that we're going to rely on our human wisdom. But when we let him know, God, I want what you want for my life. Direct my path. He might let you go that way for a minute, but he know exactly what he need to do to remove those scales off of our eyes so that he can get you back on that straight path of life. Mm -hmm. And so we look at this verse right here, trust in the Lord. That word trust, in the, in the, in the Hebrew, once again, when the Israelites of the church of Israel heard that word trust, right away their mindset would think, this means put my total weight on. It means lean totally on. It means depend totally on God. It's like, it's weighty. So when the Hebrews heard trust, that means, that what they, right away, they, oh, that means totally put all my confidence, totally put all my weight, totally put everything that's within me on the Lord. Yeah. So that's what that word trust means. Just not a word. It's an action word. So trust is a Action words that mean it requires an action from us. So when you trust it in the Lord, that means you're putting all your weight upon him. That means you're leaning confidently upon him. You're trusting him. You, you're, you're, everything about you is totally dependent on him. Yes. Now you know how you can tell when you trust in the Lord. When situations arise or when circumstances come, what do you do first? Who do you turn to? Uh -huh. If God is your first, first recourse, then you're probably trusted in him. But if you're picking up the phone and calling somebody, I got this going on, nah, 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 nah. how should I handle this? You probably trust that person more than you trust in the Lord. Yeah. Now, sometimes God may tell you to call somebody. Sometimes God may use, some, may, may use somebody. There has been times where I have went to the Lord in a situation, and I just didn't know which way to move. And I could just, you know, I said, Lord, I'm not going to do nothing until you tell me what I need to do. And I'm just going to give this one example. Uh, my, 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 my father had passed away some time ago. And my sister, we thought she had um, put the money away for the, for the funeral. But come to find out that didn't happen. So we sitting there, you know, we had to make these uh, uh, plans for the funeral. And so I'm like, okay, God. You know, we got limited funds. I don't know what to do. He, you know, there was, a, there was an unexpected death. You know, he went to the hospital to have a procedure and passed on the bed at the hospital. And um, I didn't know what to do. I did not know what to do. And so I said, I don't know what to do. And so, and all my family, everybody at the house, you know, were told me, you know, you got to do this, you got to get them at the hospital, you got to do this, you got to know how folks do. I said, I don't know what to do. So I'm, you know, I, God, okay, I, 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 when I can, you know, don't know what to do, I kind of like put my thumb on my mouth. I slip my thumb, okay, y'all better not tell nobody. And so, <laughs> and my eyes still remind me of this to this day. I went in the corner and put my thumb on my mouth. And then, you know, after I got done, I got up, I got up and got up, I got my little two little sisters. I better not hear about this no more either. I got my two sisters. <laughs> oh, oh, well. Okay, fine. 
Anyway, they ain't got no shame. Anyway, so <laughs> I got my two sisters, and we, you know, got in the car. And I just, you know, started driving around the corner. Now, did the Lord say go left, go right? No. I just started going around the corner. And as I went around the corner, I saw this guy who used to work with my father 20 years prior to his passing. And he was sitting on a stump in, a, in an open space, which was a uh, mechanic place. And I pulled up there, and he was so glad to see us, and he asked how my dad was doing. And I said, he passed away this morning. And he said, oh my, he said, have you made funerals arrangements? I said, no, we have not. And then he said, don't do anything. And Watson at that time was, you know, friends of theirs or whatever. And so, but of his. And so he said, I'm going to make a couple calls for you. To make a long story short, he said, I don't know why I ended up here. Because the spot that I saw him at, he said he had not been in that spot in 20 years. Wow. And he was just sitting, not in the back, he was sitting on the curb way. And he said something because he wasn't saved, but you know, I prayed for him, so I'm going to believe in God, believe in God, he's saved now. And so he said something told him to get up and go sit on that spot. He was just sitting there washing out a, 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 a part to his motorcycle mm -hmm. that he had not drove in 20 years. Right. And he said, I don't know why he was just sitting here. All I said, right. well, I know why he was just sitting here. Yes. And so he made the rain, he made the rain, he did everything, he did everything, he took care of everything for my father's funeral. And when I met him to meet the uh, director for the funeral, he said, you can have whatever you want. I said, well, I really don't have that much money. I only had $2,500. He said, we'll give you whatever you want, but whatever you got. All so right. we had a complete funeral, a beautiful service yes. for my father. So I say all of that to say, trust, you don't have to see it. Because a lot of times, you're not going to see it. But you're just right. trusting him. Trust you're yeah. trusting him. Yeah. Right. And to this day, my family, they, they they're still talking about that situation. They told you just got up and left, and he came back with funeral was a rancher. I said, and, 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 and he had the body ship. You know, he took care of everything. Everything. Because I didn't know what to do. And I said, Lord, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I ain't got no money. I don't know what to do. And, 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 and God, I mean, everybody was giving me all these funeral homes to go to. I didn't know what I was doing. I cried. I said, Jesus, I don't know what I'm doing. They get on my nerves. But God took care of it. Yes, and the yes. gentleman that he said, like I said, he, and my, he had not been there. He told me, I have not been in this spot for 20 years. And now he could have been way in the back, but he was sitting right there because if he was way in the back, I wouldn't have saw him when I rode down the street. But as I rode down the street, I just saw him. And I said, there goes, so, and I'm going to say his name, there goes so and so. And when I pulled up, and he said, how's your father? And my daddy had not talked in 20 years because they had a fallout. But he took care of daddy's funeral. All right. So I mean, so the trust that's in it. the Lord. That's trust true. in the Lord. That's and so right. that's what that means. Put all your weight. Put all your weight on him. Yes. Those are those is an action word. Trust is an action word. Yes. Who do you go to? Who do you go to when your back is up against the wall? Who do you go to when you don't see no way out? Yes. Who do you right. go to when when when, when, when what they call the end? The bills ain't they ain't coming together. Who do you go to? Uh -huh. You don't have to see it when your bank account is empty. So what? Yeah. His bank account is always oh. full. His resources is unlimited. Yeah. Oh we have to get to the position where we see God is our ultimate source. Uh, source. He may use a variety of resources yeah. or methods, but he is the ultimate source. Yes, and, no, yeah. and it don't matter what resource he used yeah. because he got all yeah. kind of resources. Yeah. He can bring somebody from Timbuktu to yeah. meet your needs. Yeah. Yes, yeah. God yeah. is infinite. That's why his, his wisdom. Yeah. Yes, right. So it doesn't matter if you don't see a way. It don't matter. You, when you see a way, is it really faith? Are you trusting him? Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Put all your weight upon him. Yes. Lean totally yes. upon him. Yes. And then move when he tells you to move. Like I said, he didn't say, get up. I mean, I just got, you Because you got the Holy Spirit. You got, you got an automatic GPS. Yes. Okay, so it's in you. So the GPS kicked off. Yes. I didn't know where I was going. I just got in my car and just started driving. Yes. But the Holy Spirit knew. Yes. He didn't say, go left, go right. But I went left, went right, and went yes. ended up right, ended up to see the man. Trust in the Lord. Okay. We are now on. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. In all your ways. Like I said.
say in the beginning, this, thing, uh, this, this journey called life, it has a lot of detours, it has a lot of twists and turns, yes. but when we are aligned and trusting in God, he will make that path straight. Yes, in spite of the curves and the twists and turns yes. and the detours, yes. he know how to get you to where you Come need to that. go. Yes. You got, like I said, you got the best GPS ever made. Yes. Ever made. Amen. Ever made. Amen. Jesus is our source. We don't need AI. We got. We have our own AI Amen. called All Almighty Intelligence yeah. in us. We got our own AI. We don't need the man-made AI. We got. Come on. Yeah. We got our own. Yeah. Yeah. And we would never fail when we trust and rely on Him. Yes. Right. Amen. Okay. Amen. Number. What verse? Okay, be not, I'm on seven, I'm going to group seven and eight together. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Mm -hmm. It shall be health to thy novel and marrow and to thy bones. Mm -hmm. Seven, be not wise, be not wise in thy own mm -hmm. eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. What does that mean? Be not wise. We just been talking about that. Yep. Don't rely on your own wisdom, your own intelligence. A lot of times, our own wisdom, our own intelligence, it can sometimes be uh, the re religiosity. You know, we, we know it all. In uh, Corinthians, Paul talks about the wisdom of man. You know, sometimes we think we're so high and mighty. Don't think we're so high and mighty because you, you think you're so high and mighty, you, you will fall. Right. Pride. Right. God does not like pride. The wisdom, wisdom flourish in an environment of humility and reverence of the Lord or fear of the Lord. Wisdom will flourish if you have a humble spirit and you fear the Lord. What does fear the Lord mean? Look at this verse right here. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Consult the Lord first. Don't think you always, don't think that you have the answer to everything or anything. Don't rely on your own self. Okay. Be not wise. That, that selfishness, that's that self-sufficiency, that self-dependent. I'm dependent on me because I know more than God. I'm dependent on myself. That's what be not wise in your own eyes. Things may look good or right to you. But it's not the way, it's not God's way. That's like right. I was saying about the people who I work with, you know, who been with me forever. God said, no, that's not, that's not his way. So be not wise in your own ways, but lean totally on the Lord. Yeah. Be not wise in thy own eyes, but fear the Lord. That means always being aware of the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Always being aware of his presence. Always being aware that he's near, he's in you, he's with you, he's on you, he's around you everywhere you go. Because when you keep, when you are always conscious of the presence of the Lord, you're going to walk different. You're going to act different. Your actions are going to be different. You are going to treat people different. When we are conscious of his presence, we're not going to be mean to people, we're not going to be cursing people out, we ain't going to be giving people told, we ain't going to be giving people a piece of our mind. Because we know that he's watching. Yes. Pastor Sam and Pastor Bobby may not know what, what, what we're doing out there, but he sees. We got a God that sit high and look low. He see the good, the bad, and the ugly. Right. So when he so when he tells us, so when he tells us for uh, for the Lord to depart from evil, that means we are always conscious of His presence, and because we're conscious of His presence everywhere we go, we are not going to do evil. We are going to be afraid to do evil yes. because we fear the Lord, because we reverence yes. the Lord. Amen. And because we reverence and we fear him and we know that he's watching us, we want to do everything that we know to please him. Right. We, I know there's so many of us, and I include, you know, myself as well, like I, everything I say, I always include Tony. We say we love the Lord, and we do. But do we fear him? Do we fear him? Because when we fear him, we know what his word says about actions.
actions that are immoral. We know what his word says about mistreating people. So when we fear him, we reverence him, we respect who he is. We respect his word, we respect what he said. So why would I act contrary to what the word of God says? I love him, but do I really fear him? Do I really fear him? Those are things that we have to ask ourselves. There's a difference. Many people love the Lord, and I'm not going to say they don't, but you can tell there's a lack of fear there. There's a lack of fear. Okay. Because when you fear him, you're going to be conscious. You're conscious of him on you, around you all the time. So you're, you're going to watch your mouth. 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 Okay, be not wise in thy own and fear. And then, verse 8, it shall be help to thy knowledge and marvel to thy bone. So yeah. when you fear the Lord, you're walking in the Lord ways, you're doing things that pleases him, it's going to be health to you, and it's going to have, and you're going to have a flourishing, productive, fruitful life. Amen. Because you're doing those things, you're operating in those things, you're moving in a way that's pleasing the Lord. So many of us make life hard for ourselves. Yeah. We make it hard for ourselves. And it's all because we're not following God's instruction and wisdom. Yeah. We're not fearing him. We're not leaning up to him. We're not putting our total, our total weight up on him. We're not trusting in him. And we're not letting the attributes that he told us to govern our lives. Because he said, when we do all of these things, it shall be help for us. Not only physical health, but spiritual health, mental health, emotional health. Do you know how many saints are just so like on an emotional roller coaster? Yes. Because we're not fearing the Lord. Right. You up, down, up, down, this way, that way. <clears throat> because we're not fearing him. But he said, when you fear me, you're going to have a fruitful, flourishing life in every area. Every area. It shall be here. Okay. Honor the Lord. I'm on uh, verse 9 and 10. I know we're probably going to get through all of these today, but it's okay. We're going to take our time because we're going to walk in wisdom. That's right. Okay. 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Honor the Lord. Honor the Lord with our substance. Number one, we have to remember that God is because anything that we have, our wealth, our fortune, anything, money, is from God. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have it. So number one, he said, you're honoring God with what he's already given you because you're thankful that he has blessed you with your fortune, with your wealth. That's right. So it's, it's a God said, honor me, honor me. And not that, that, that's with our local giving, but also when God tells us that there's other needs out there in the world, it's, part, it's all looking, the perspective is looking at him, right. honoring him with what he has blessed you with. So if God tells you to meet a need here, meet a need over there, meet a need at your church, he's, he's blessed you with that. So he said, honor me with your first group because it's mine. And I can take it away from you at any time. So when we start being generous, because we serve a generous God, and, and when we start being generous with what God has given us, we will see how God will begin to open up the windows of heaven, and he will be generous back unto us. And a lot of times it may not be in monetary things. Whatever it is that you need, you may need... You may need uh, an emotional uh, healing. You may need a physical healing. You may need to be healed in your relationships. I mean, whatever it is, God knows what your need is. Yes. So he said, when you honor me with what I have already given you, because I blessed you with it, I'm going to honor you. Uh -huh. I'm going to meet you. I'm going to meet your needs, whatever it is. Whatever it is. 
whatever it is. And then we'll find ourselves not so much praying that God will meet my need because he has already blessed me and given me everything that I need. Now I can pray for the needs of other people. I can pray for other people. We'll, you, we'll find ourselves in our prayer time. It will not just be about praying for me, 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 me. Because God has already taken care of me. He has already met my need. I spend the more, now I spend the most of my time praying for other people. I'm praying for the world. I'm praying for the schools. I'm praying for the children. Because God has already taken care of me. Because right. I have honored him with all that I have. With my first increase. First increase in our time in the morning. When we went, before we put our foot on the floor, are we giving thanks unto the Lord? He allowed us to wake up. So before we even FaceTime the world, we need to be FaceTiming him. That's who we FaceTime. What do we do when we get up? Do we grab our phone and see what's happening on Facebook? Or do we look up? Hello, Father. You know? Thank you, Father. We honor him with our first increase. That's the increase you was able to wake up this morning. So honor him. Don't leave him out. The hope of wisdom, the beginning of wisdom is understanding yes. who he is. Yes. The fear of the Lord, being conscious of his presence in you, around you at all times. Mm -hmm. All right, where were we at? First fruits, okay. Uh, 11, my son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. But whom the Lord loveth, he correct, even as the Father, the Son, in whom he delight. Okay. Chasing discipline. God is going to discipline us. God is going to discipline us. And the discipline, we need to look at that discipline as a benefit. Because he loves those whom he corrects. Discipline means to train or to teach. So when God is chasing us or he's disciplining us, it's an opportunity for us to open up our heart and allow the Holy Spirit to teach us some things, to train us. It is a blessing. He said he loves them. Matter of fact, when you love, you know, we, we all have, well, most of us have children, and you know when your children do something wrong, I mean, what do you do? Do you tell them or do you just say, okay, you know, go ahead. I mean, do you chase them? Do you discipline them? Do you train them? Do you correct them? I'm not telling people, I don't, if you love somebody, when you see them going down the wrong path, right. you need to let them know. Correct them. That's why I have a problem with ministries that do not preach against sin, that do not preach against repentance, that do not preach against Jesus Christ is coming back. Because if you love me, and you know I'm going down that wrong road to hell. You need to let me know. Right. You need to tell me about sin. You need to tell me I need to turn away from my sin. You need to tell me that I need to place my faith in Jesus Christ. You need to tell me because if I don't, I will be spending eternally separated from God in hell. Telling people all the time or giving them these sugar-coated messages and not letting them know if they don't get their lives together, if they don't get it right, if they don't get out of sin, they are on their way to destruction, is not love. It's not love. You cannot sit there and let someone continue down the wrong path and don't tell them about it. That's right. That's not love. That's not love. And I tell any, I don't have a big circle because I'm very careful of my circle, but if I'm doing something wrong, don't tell me what I want to hear. Right. Don't tell me what I want to hear. Tell me the truth. Yeah. Because the truth is going to set me free yeah. and it's going to help me grow. It's going to help me develop. I don't want to hear I'm all this and I'm all that because I'm not. Yeah. And I know I'm not. Don't lie to me. Give me the truth so that I can get myself together. Yeah. And that's what a father does. That's what a parent does. That's what God does with us. He let us know the truth. Because it teaches us, it trains us, it corrects us, and it gets us on the right path of life. That's right. Many of us believers, we don't want to be correct. I mean, yeah, we don't want to be corrected. Because see, when people tell us the truth, we get upset. And then we get to wear our feelings on our shoulder. And then we wonder why we can't get delivered, why we can't get saved, why we can't get set free. Because you don't want to be corrected. Because you don't want to be taught. 
You have to have a teachable spirit yeah. if you want to walk in wisdom and continue down the path of life. Yeah. Chasing discipline is not punitive, but it's redemptive yeah. and it's corrective. We have an open heart, an open spirit, and allow people to give you godly correction. And especially in love. Now, I understand there are some people that call themselves correcting you and it's not from the right place. Right. I got that. But for the most part, uh, I speak here in this church yet. Believers here, or the ministers here, I, I, I'm going to say, if they correct you, it's coming from a right place. If they tell you on the wrong path, you're doing something wrong. Right. It's coming from the right path. Right. Because you're going to continue down that path and you're gonna just you're gonna end up in self, and I say self-destruction. Right, it's right. self-destruction. Right. I've seen so many people because they did not heed correction, they did not want correction, and they just end up in self just destroying themselves. And God is a merciful God, He's a good God, He's not gonna force Himself on you, He'll just step back. And you will and, and, and let you go and continue down that path if you continue to disregard his correction that he uses through people. So we have to have a teachable spirit. And we have to have a spirit that's open to correction. Okay. Amen. Now we're on verse, how much, how much time? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. We're on verse uh, 13. And I'm going to group 13 and 15. Okay, I'm, okay, I think I'm going to take this last question. Then, then I'm going to end. Maybe. No, you didn't do that. <laughs> Third, verse 13. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. So those words that get wisdom and understanding, remember, what, remember the difference. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, in her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways are pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. I'm going to group 12 and uh, verses, no, what did I say? 13. And 17. Okay, let's go back to happiness is happiness. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Happy. Happy that's translated into blessed, fortunate, and highly favored. So when you see that in the Greek, blessed, fortunate, and highly favored is the man or the woman or the person that that find wisdom. Wisdom is only found in Christ. Remember? Wisdom, Christ is the power and wisdom of God. Uh, Galatians chapter 2 tells us that all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge is hid in Christ. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge is hid in Christ. So Christ is all through there. I mean, what is this all about? This all about Jesus, y'all. Yeah, right. It's all about Jesus, okay? Right. So, if you want wisdom, right. you need Jesus. Yes. And you need to be so connected to Jesus that you feel his heartbeat. Yes. You need to be so connected to Jesus that you know his heart. You know his heart. Because he knows your heart. So we need to be so connected that we know, we know his heart. Because he gives his heart to those who, 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 who searches out him or who seek him. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. He, he'll, give you, he'll give you his heart. He'll let you know what's on his heart. He'll let you know what you need to be praying for, how you need to be praying. He'll let you know. So what, so what we're seeing here, fortunate, and, and that means you're going to be fortunate, you're going to be blessed. You're already blessed. You're favored. You are highly favored. You are blessed when you are that connected to wisdom, a.k.a. Jesus. And being connected to Jesus, walking in Jesus, knowing his purpose and his will, his plan for your life is more precious, more valuable than anything 
That's basically what this scripture is the interpretation of. Is anything that you could ever desire or want. Being connected to him. Following him. Then as we said earlier. You get quantity of years. Which is external life. As well as enjoying a fruitful, productive, quality life here on earth. It starts with being connected to Jesus. And unfortunately, that's why so many of us are running here and there, being tossed to and fro, because we don't want to align up with him. All right. And I cannot give anyone a shortcut if you're not lined up, if you're not connected. You may have a moment or two or maybe a month, but you're going to go right back to being tossed to and fro and confused and, and, and living a life of chaos and struggling when you don't have to because you're not connected to him. And you're not remaining connected. Because as I said, excuse me, as I said earlier, wisdom is not something that is a, it's a one-time thing. You get it one time and, and, and you're good to go forever. No. As we continue to read, you have to retain it. Yes. You have to keep it. So that's a daily pursuit, a daily alignment. And I'm being redundant on purpose because I see so many of us saints just going up and down, to and fro, just all over the place in life because they refuse to stay aligned, connected to Jesus. Yeah. And then we want an easy way. The seven steps of how to have peace. The seven <laughs> steps of how to have a good life. Oh my goodness. There's only one step. It's called Jesus. Jesus. It's called Jesus. Hallelujah. That's the only step. That's it's right. called total alignment, total surrender, total commitment, total obedience to Jesus. Period. That's it. That's it. That's it. And so that's what this group of um, pastors is telling us. You'll be happy. You'll be fortunate. You'll be blessed. Uh, blessing is not the way the world describes it. Blessed is being enriched. In God's goodness, in God's favor, in God's love, in God's grace, in God's mercy. That's what success and bless is biblically. Yeah. It's not the way the world describes it, in having all the riches, all the fame, all the material things, all the notoriety. No, that's not success, or that's worldly success, or that's worldly wisdom. Right. It's not godly wisdom. Right. So that's based on this uh, portion of scripture, scripture is telling us. The length of days is right, is in his right hand. Eternal life, quality, uh, quality of years. Not only are you going to enjoy life here, you're going to enjoy life in here and after. See, I, I, I thank God because God did not just save us for heaven. He saved us to have a fruitful, productive, abundant life right here. And we can have that, we can enjoy that as long as we walk. Connected to him, recognizing that he is wisdom. He is the source of wisdom. He's the source. Amen. And I think I'm going to, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to stop. Peace. Let's say, do we do 17? The way, the ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. Okay, I'm just going to put it down. Let me be done with that one. Okay. All her way, all her, all her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her ways are peace. All her ways are peace. These are the benefits of pursuing godly wisdom. Her ways are ways of pleasantness. Her ways are ways of fruitfulness. Her ways was pleasantness, goodness. Everything about God is good. His ways, they may not look good to us, but they're good for us. His ways are good, and they are acceptable. God knows our future. He knows our tomorrow. He has been our tomorrow. So he knows what our tomorrow looks like. And he has already given us provision to walk into tomorrow. Peaceful, 
and pleasant. Because everything about God is good. Everything. God is perfect. God is flawless. God, I mean, God, I mean, there is no sin, there is no unrighteousness in him. God is omnipotent. God does not only have wisdom, he is wisdom. He is all-knowing. His resources, everything about him is endless, is infinite. So why would I depend on me? Why would I depend on me? I don't know what I, I don't know what what's for, what's for me outside that, that door, but He does. So if I trust Him to save me from eternal damnation, from hell, from being eternally separated from Him, why would I not trust Him with my entire with my entire life here on earth? Why would I lean to my own understanding? And you know, and, and my understanding is not that great. <laughs> Okay, my eyes, I mean, it, it, it's limited. Hey, I understand. So why would I leave? Why would I leave to it? Why? That's right. That's right. I just don't have an answer for it. His ways, and I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave all of us with this. His ways are pleasant. Yeah. Everything that God has for each and every one of you, His plan is perfect, is good, and it's a plan of peace. God loved each and every one of us so much, and it grieves him to see us going down that road of destruction. He don't want us to go down the road of destruction. He is our biggest cheerleader, and that's why he will put roadblocks in our way. That's why he will put people in your way to tell you, no, come back. Don't go that route. Don't go that route. And I'm just, I just want to encourage us to listen, to ask God to increase our spiritual discernment so that we can hear from him, so that we can be able to discern the difference of what is him and what is not of him. When we are aligned with him and we are walking with him, God would not allow us to continue down a path that's going to cause us destruction. That's right. When we pray and ask him. And like I said, Lord, uh, uh, three, five, I want to trust you. And we mean it from our heart. I'm going to lean not to my own understanding, but I'm putting all my weight yes. on you. Because you know my future. You know what's best for me. Yes, he, he is the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the ending. Mm -hmm. He knows it all. Oh. So I'm trusting you, Lord. I'm standing on your word that you're not going to let me fall. You're not going to let my feet slip. You're not going to let me stumble. But you're going to keep me walking straight, straight into my destiny. Because I'm going to fulfill what it is that you called me to. I'm going to be everything that God has called me to be. Not an ounce of an anointing going to fall to the ground. Right. So God, I'm trusting you. Trust. I'm trusting you Trust. to bring everything that you have ordained for me to pass. Everything. And that will include some discipline, and that's going to include some chastening. Okay. But we're going to look at it as being redemptive. We're going to look at it as being teachable, teaching. teaching and training us. Because we can't get to that next level that God want to take us to unless we allow him to correct us. We have to allow him to correct us. Or we, will be, or we will stay stagnated and we will not move in the things that God wants us to move in. Mm -hmm. And then we can't blame nobody else but ourselves. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to stop there. If, if we have um, Bible study on Wednesday, I oh yeah. Okay, so then we'll pick up uh, with verses 18 on Wednesday. And I pray, I want all of us to think about, like I started in the beginning, I asked, since we've been in the, in, in the book of Proverbs, ask the Lord, is there any area, not any, not any, we all got what areas, what areas of our lives that we have not been walking in wisdom in? What areas of our lives that we have been acting foolishly and to show us how to walk? in wisdom.
how to apply our days, as Moses said in Psalms 90. How to apply our days, how to apply our days so that we can apply our hearts to wisdom. We want to walk, we want our days to be productive and fruitful. Amen. You know, we got to redeem the time. Yes. And we got to be productive and fruitful with the time that God has allotted us. So I'm encouraging all of us this week as we go through this week to ask the Lord, where do we need to apply his wisdom and to teach us and to show us, to put his fingerprints on those foolish areas in our lives that we have been walking in foolishness and to show us how to walk in wisdom so that we can reflect his life in a dark world that do not know him. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you, Father, for your word, oh God. I thank you, Lord, for using your word, Father, to transform us, oh God. Showing us, Father, how to redeem the time, Lord Jesus. How to walk in a way that is pleasing unto you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, my prayer for each and every one of us, Lord, as we go through this week, Father, that you will put your fingerprints on those areas in our lives that you want to correct. Those areas, Father, that you want to shine your light on. Mm -hmm. Those areas, Father, that we may have been walking unknowingly in foolishness we ask father god that you show us those areas so that we can apply wisdom oh god so we can apply godly wisdom so that we can reflect your life to a world that do not know jesus father i thank you father that your you. word father god did not fall on bad ground today but a fellow good ground lord an open receptive hearts oh god hearts that's ready to be transformed hearts that's ready father god to even feast upon you even more I thank you, Father, for every soul, Father God, that's represented here today, Lord. I pray, Father God, for each and every home, Father. I pray, Father God, that you will bless each and every home, Father. I pray, Father God, that you will heal each and every home in whatever areas that, they, that we need to be healed in, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray, Father God, for your people, Lord, that as we leave this place, Father God, but we never leave your presence, oh God, and that you will make your presence even known, even more so to each and every one of us. In Jesus' name I pray and I thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I hope you got your pieces. You know, 